and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And then verse 4. But God. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love, wherein, wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead and in our sins, He hath made us alive together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come that He might show the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me please? Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day that You have given to us and for the opportunity that we have tonight again to open up Your book. Lord, I, I realize tonight that I can't do this on my own. I totally depend upon You. I pray that in the next few moments that we may realize that it is the Spirit of God that brings life that brings eternal life, that brings abundant life, that brings everlasting life, that brings joyous life in a world that we live in that is corrupt and dying and, and in sin and, and, and greedy. But Lord, you have told us to be a light in a dark world. I pray tonight that you will speak to every heart, every life. Father, I pray that you will use me tonight. That when we walk away from this place tonight, that we can truly say that we have been with Jesus. And all that you do, we'll thank you and praise you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say it. Amen. I want to tell you a personal story tonight. Is the night that I got saved, my life radically changed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Now, did you realize that in some of the modern religions that we have, if you want to call it that, in the modern world that we live out, they have taken the word wretched out? We live in a society where everybody's got to feel good. We live in a society where you can't tell a, a criminal that he's a criminal. He is an objective thinker of the law. <laughs> we cannot tell people that they are sinners. Because God loves us all and we all God's children. That ain't so. We are rotten to the core. As a matter of fact, we had been rotten for so long that we was like Lazarus. We began to stink on the third day, say The Bible says that I was dead. That's my past, say amen. My past was I had no desire for the things of God. I had no desire to live for Him. I had no desire to walk in the Spirit of God. I had I, none whatsoever. We have a world that has no desire for them to do right in life. See? Amen. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but what? The end thereof are the ways of death. We have, we, I was like that. I was a wretch. You say you wasn't 11 years old. I was a wretch. Take my word for it. Take I could lie with the best of them. I could start a fight with the best of them. I could sin with the best of them, and I was 11 years old. See? You see, we measure sin because we come to church. We all come to church, y'all listen. Y'all, we all come to church. And man, we feel good about coming to church, and we see old so and so sitting back down and ain't Bobby. And I can sit back here and I can praise God, raise my hand and say, Lord, you know I didn't cuss as much as 
Bobby did last week. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? I hope not. I'm a little bit. <laughs> I'm talking about the first part, not the last part. But that's the way we come to church. That's the way we worship. Lord, what's he doing here? What's she doing here? I've I done a lot better than they did. Listen, they ain't, none of us did better than anybody. It's Jesus that saves yeah. us. It ain't got nothing to do with what yeah. we do or don't do. Yeah. Yeah. It's what he does inside of our life. We were dead. My past was dead. I walked according to the prince and the power. My ruler was Satan. And it can't get any plainer than that, Satan. Why do we have the corruption that we have in the world today? Listen, you may think I'm crazy and you may think I've lost it, but we're living in a sad day when people can go to a government, uh, a governmental meeting in Alaska, United States of America, and a Satanist gets up and praises Satan and is not rebuked for that. We are in a sad yes. day. Yes. Yes. It's come, listen, it is a sad day when the Satanist... Listen... It is. It's not us personally that they can't that they can't stand. It's not about my personality. It's not even about my political standing. People do not like Christian today because we stand with one that got up out of the ground and said, "I have the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and I am an overcomer through Jesus Christ." Amen. That's what they can't understand. They tried to kill him when he was born. They tried to kill him when he was older. They put him in the ground and the grave couldn't hold him no more. He had to get up. I was living in a world where Jesus was not real to me. Yes. But then my present, but God, who was rich in mercy, yes. although I was a sinner and although I had rejected Him, in times past, and although that I was a vile sinner, He still loved me, He still died for me, He still resurrected, and He's waiting on us to say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. Now, what is my present? I am a child of the King. Yes, amen. The blood that now runs through my vein is not the blood of Adam, but it is the blood of Jesus Christ. I have been washed in the blood. I have been redeemed. I have been brought from life unto death. Why is it that we still like why is it that we still live like dead people? Do you remember when Jesus cast the demon out of the Gadarian and he threw them de them demons went into all them pigs and then have you ever thought what in the world was a Jew doing with a bunch of pigs? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever really thought about that? Then they was making money selling them to heathen. Then pigs went and and committed suicide, by the way. And what did the people do? The people did not rejoice because a man had been delivered. They did not rejoice because a man that was uh, that was a sinner was saved. You know what they said? What are you going to do about my pigs? Isn't it sad that we live in a world where we say, Lord, don't uh, take my problems, but don't uh, take my sin, but don't take my problems away. Say amen. amen. Don't take my pig. Do not take my pigs from me. They listen. I've had some sins too that just kind of squealed away sometimes. Didn't want to leave. But don't we take those sins? Then we hold them pigs dear to our heart. Man, we'll listen. If you clean up a pig and put lipstick on a pig. Put a bow in its hair and a, uh, on its ear, between its ears, and you put a bow on its tail, it's still a pig. <laughs> and man, we'll hold that pig, we'll love that pig, we'll stroke that pig. And we'll say, Lord, take my problem, because a Gadarian was a problem to me. He would howl and scream and run through the graveyard at night. 
But they said, Lord, don't take my peace. Aren't we just like that? Yes. We love that. But listen, He has given us the ability to not walk by fear, but walk by faith, and to walk not by sight. He has given us the victory of faith to live in and walk in, but God, who is rich in mercy, died for us. Well, that's my present state. I'm saved. Not only am I saved, I am sealed under the day of redemption. Say amen. amen. There's two questions I get asked as a preacher one evening. First of all, they walk up to you and they say, Preacher, you've got to ask a question. I said, I ain't asking. Am I going to be known in heaven? And will I know my loved ones in heaven? And I look at them and I say, well, let me ask you this. Do you believe that we're going to have a glorified body in heaven? Oh, yeah. Well, a glorified body includes a glorified mind. Say amen. amen. I'm not going to be any dumber up there than I am down here. Say amen. amen. I'm going to be a whole lot smarter than I'm there. And I said, and by the way, it was John that said that when we get up there, we were going to be known even as I am known. That's pretty clear. Say amen. amen. I'm not going to be dumber in heaven that I am down here. I'm going to know you when I get there. Amen. And the second question I get asked is, you believe in one saved all the second? Well, I look at them people and I say this. I ain't looking to get out of it, Tim. Are you looking for an out? I am sealed to the day of redemption. The Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of me. What in the world do I want to get rid of that for, Savior? Amen. Do I live a perfect life? No. Do you live a perfect life? No. And if any, listen, if you think you live a perfect life, come to me and talk to me after service and I'll show you where you ain't perfect, Savior. Amen. I'll make you so mad you want to hit me, Savior. But there's one thing I know. I know that my... Listen, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't know if y'all are old enough to remember this, but when I was in elementary school, I'd see this little girl. She was pretty. And I'd take a marker, and I'd put her name in the Book of Life. And at recess, I'd walk by and I'd say, I got your name in my hand. <laughs> She said, you are dumb as a rock. <laughs> <laughs> and during the daytime, I'd look at that name. And I'd think about her. I'd think about that little wavy hair. I'd think about them blue eyes. And I'd think, man, I really like her. Have y'all ever dated anybody named me Jack or Ruth? <laughs> I did. Had her name in there. It went from right there all the way to the end of that finger. <laughs> I'd look at that. And listen, the Bible tells me that Jesus wrote my name in the palm of his hand. Amen. And when I'm having a very bad day and things ain't going really right and it rains on a Monday night on our parade, <laughs> And you get them to listen. I, I got to tell a story, and I'm gonna take. I'll probably get killed for this. Edit this part out. Mm -hmm. Yesterday oh. morning, we had, you know, we had a storm third, uh, Saturday night. Boy, I mean, it blew trees down, everything like this. I start getting text messages on Sunday morning at seven o'clock. We ain't got no power. We ain't got no power. We ain't got no power. I said okay. And then the last text message I got is a lady that lives right down below the church. She said we ain't got no power. I said I don't think the church has got power. Now, I don't have one of those pianos. I got an electric piano. The first thing I thought about is, what, and I just got somebody to play that song. What am I going to do? I'm spending all my time instead of praying for the service. I'm worried about all of that. I get to the church and guess what? We got power. I didn't have to worry about that. It wasn't on my agenda, but I did because somebody had informed me of that. And so on my worst days, when I'm having a bad day, and I'm sure that when I was on my way to church and I'm arguing with myself and I'm wondering what I'm going to do and I'm wondering who's going to be there, who ain't going to be there, who's going to show up and who ain't going to show up and how am I going to do this or how am I going to do that, Jesus looked over and He just whispers my name when He reads it from the palm. 
of his name. I am sealed to the day of redemption. Yes. I am sealed. I'm done. Stick a fork in me. I am done. How do you know that, pretty much? Because I got a future sealed. I not only had a past, I not only have a present with a powerful, loving, awesome God, I got a future for him. That in the ages to come, we might sit in heavenly places. Amen. From the day I got saved, I know what that heavenly places are saying. There are times that I, 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 I mean, really, it gets tough in the preacher world, say amen. You got church members. Now, I don't have this problem in cowboy church and thank God and thank y'all. But in traditional church, people's mean as a snake. People are. You walk in and everything is wrong from the carpet ain't the right color and the wall don't match the flooring and the and, and, and you preach too long and you didn't preach long enough and you got like you, you, you don't you, listen I ain't perfect never said I was but I ain't never pastored a perfect church either see Amen. when God told me one day he said he said I'm looking for a perfect church I said when you find it don't join it you'll mess it up say Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you'll mess that sucker up man. don't join it but my future to sit in heavenly Places with him. That in the ages to come, he might show. We don't know nothing yet, folks. I'm telling you, we don't know it all yet. We know a lot. We know we're saved. We know we're sealed. We know we're on our way to heaven. But the Bible says that I has not seen nor ear heard the glory of what's on the other side. What am I going to... Listen, a lot of people think when they die and go to heaven, they're going to float on a cloud of bear and eat a bowl of banana pudding. You are so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, they said, you want a little bowl of banana pudding? I said, no, I want a bigger bowl of banana pudding. <laughs> I want a bigger bowl of banana I am going to get to sit down not just at the feet of Jesus. But the Bible tells me that I'll be able to sit down and talk to Paul about his missionary journey. I want to know more, Paul. Paul, you didn't tell us this, but Paul, in the book of Galatians, you said that you spent three and a half years in the desert and then you just went right on with something else. I want to know about that three and a half years in the desert that you spent with Jesus. Said. Peter, what was it really like on the night that you denied him? I don't, tell me how you felt when Jesus looked at you and loved you again. Tell me what went through your mind. I want to know those things. Jesus, when you was in the Garden of Gethsemane and you said, let this cup pass from me, I know that it was a cup of sin, but I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me. Tell me what was going on. Tell me how you redeemed us and you became the propitiation for my sins. John, when they put you in that book, in that pot of oil, what did Jesus tell you? He didn't say what Jesus said. He just said he was on the he did, he survived the oil and he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I want to know what happened between the boil and the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord today, he had to get there somehow, say amen. Yeah. I'm gonna say, John, tell me all about it, say amen. I'm not just gonna sit up there. We will increase in knowledge, the Bible says. Everything that we don't know, we will know because we can ask, say amen. Yeah. We can ask and ask Jesus to show us the way. My past my present, and my future. Some of you are still living in the past. There is a present for you. His name is Jesus. He can forgive, cleanse,
clean us up. He can empower us to walk by faith and not by sight. And then my future is I'll get to spend eternity with Him. Have you ever thought about how long eternity is? You ever thought about that? Infinity. It just keeps going. If there was a softball size sphere of gold on the top pinnacle of the entire state building, and a dove flew by that golden ball, pure gold, every 500 years, and took his wing and swept. By the time that ball was disappeared, by the one little sweep of a feather on a dove, eternity would just begin. It just began. And I am going to live as long as God lives. Forever. That's my future. Do you know your future tonight? Let us pray. Father, again, I thank you for the opportunity that we've had tonight to open up your word. I pray that we have been challenged. I pray, Lord, it ain't what we was meant or what and what we was going to do, but it's what we meant to do. Just to spend a little time with you. To be encouraged in the presence of God be empowered by the Spirit of God, to be assured from the Word of God about my past, about my present, and about our future. We ask you to take the words that we said tonight, apply them to our hearts, that when we walk out tonight, people can say that we have been with Jesus. It's in his name we pray and all of God's people say it. Amen. Thank y'all. I do want you to do one thing. If you have not ever trusted Christ as Lord and Savior, I'm going to be around for a little bit. I want you to come up and say, Preacher Mike, I want to, I want to have that talk with you. Do not leave tonight if you do not know Jesus Christ. We'll sit down, I'll talk to you and pray with you, and you can invite Jesus to come in your home. Don't leave tonight until you had that talk with him. That's important. That's why we're here. That's why we come every week is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you again for coming, Joy, for helping me tonight. I appreciate that. Y'all give Shannon a hand for saying I'll be singing, I'll be singing next Monday night, so y'all get a crowd in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yesterday was uh, 10 months for me being cleaned off of meth after 26 years of being addicted. So um, oh, yeah. I've really been I've really been fighting a, a battle and um, things are starting to get better because I, I turned my life over to God, but I still struggle every day. So God can keep me in prayer. Sure will, brother. You had a past. Now you're in the future and in the present, and God will give you a future. Yeah. You know, all of us are in that book. All of us. We struggle every day, brother. Right? And I wish I could tell you it's going to get better. But it ain't. It's going to get best. It's going to get best. A lot of praying and in that world. Yes, sir. I promise you, it'll change your life.
vestibular and ablation. She's in stage three congestive heart failure. There ain't no stage four. Uh, anything they do to my mother's heart at this point is critical. Uh, highly, highly, the doctor could not stress how highly critical this is. They've hesitated for a year to do anything because they were trying to fix things with medication and all, but I think now we're, we're at that point. And so just remember, remember us in prayer. Also remember my two-year-old nephew, he fell off their front porch today and he has a skull fracture and they had to rush him to uh, Scottish Rite uh, Children's Hospital. Uh, he's all right, they said there's no brain swelling but there could be later on, so be in prayer for that too. Ooh. Kind of gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time of fellowship. Lord, we thank you for the message we received here tonight. We, we hope that we will take that and place it in our hearts and, and let it show throughout the week as we live our lives. Lord, help us show and influence our friends, our family, anybody, our co workers that. that does not know Jesus, let, let the messages we receive here at Cowboy Church reflect on us and make a positive influence on them. Lord, we ask you to bless this church, bless our pastor and all the ones that make it happen. Forgive us for our sins. Go with us and lead us to God. As we say, we ask you in your precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you all. And buy it and bring somebody to read it next week. Oh, see, it's going to sun.